Hey guys, so I am going to continue to do my makeup and keep rotating the foundations and whatnot that I'm using. And I'm also going to continue to show you what the different colors of the new e.l.f. pout clouts look like. So we're doing another color on the lips today. Uh, but as you saw from the title of the video, I have a tip for you. Do you have eyeshadows in your collection? that are so pigmented that they stain your skin every time you wear them, don't throw them away, don't give them away. I have a solution for that, and you don't have to buy anything special in order to do it. But let's get started with the makeup, and we can talk about all this as we go, because I have another tip that I want to give you. Uh, this is Hard Candy Glostopia Lip Repair Oil, and it's just a clear. I just have to get something on my lips. They're so dry. I think starting, I was going to say tomorrow, but I think I'm going to start immediately. I'm going to stop drinking my favorite tea because the only way I'm going to find out if it's the clove powder in the tea that is making me break out is to just stop drinking it. I, I hate to do it because I'm so addicted to that tea. I love it so much, but I'm going to switch to something else. I have other options. I have other kinds of tea in the house, and I also have coffee. So yeah, I, I have to see if that's why I am getting this breakout here, because I was on, I think it was WebMD, and they were saying that clove powder can cause skin rashes. And I was like, oh, that's got to be it then. That's got to be what's causing this. So the only way to find out is to stop. So just wanted to let you know that I'm finally going to give up my favorite tea. And if it doesn't go away, then I'll know that it wasn't the tea after all. But I think it is because I was putting clove powder on a cut up apple with yogurt every day and the rash got less worse uh, when I stopped doing that. Okay, anyways, um, yeah, <laughs> got to talk and do the makeup at the same time. I'm going to use Maybelline Baby Skin. Um... And I'm going to use my, my favorite AOA Studio High Def Brush F3. This is from shopmasay.com. This is like a silicone primer. And it's a great one for um, covering your pores. Yeah, Maybelline Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser. It's also a good primer if you have dry skin because it isn't going to aggravate your dry skin. So we're, I'm putting that everywhere. Okay, next we're going in with my NYX Pro Fix Stick Correcting Concealer in the shade Pink. So my other tip that I have for you, and this actually has nothing to do with makeup, but do you have a sweater in your wardrobe? that is too big for you. I mean like so big that it drives you crazy because you may you may remember, you may not, but this is the sweater I had on in yesterday's video as well. And it was driving me crazy all day because it was too big. I mean it was falling off my shoulders and it, it was just driving me nuts. Because with this type of sweater you don't want it to be too big because then, you know, your bra is going to show and it was just, it was driving me nuts. So you know what I did? 
when I did the laundry this morning, today was the day that I would do towels, socks, underwear, that sort of thing. I threw the sweater in with those things, and then when I threw the everything in the dryer, I threw the sweater in there too. And it shrunk a size, and now it fits perfect, and it didn't hurt the sweater in any way. So if you have a sweater that's too big, throw it in the dryer. And uh, I was afraid, I was kind of afraid to do that, but then I was like, well, you don't really like it the way it is. It's no good being like a size too big. Because when I bought this, for some reason I bought it too big and then I lost weight. And so then it was way, way too big. Yeah, it was driving me nuts yesterday. So yeah, throw throw your sweater in. Um, I still have to play with this neckline a little bit sometimes. But, um, you know what it is? There we go. This necklace has little, um, sections on it where you can make it longer and shorter. So I just changed the distance. So now I won't be fighting with that the whole video. Um, so what was I even talking about? Oh boy. Um, yeah, so the sweater fits perfect now. Okay. Um, so concealer. Yeah, that's what I was doing. I was doing my concealer. I saw somebody using this in a video and they were using their finger to blend it in. So I thought, ooh, I've only used this with a brush. So let me see if it makes any difference. Probably not, but. <laughs> and then we're doing like a concealer cocktail and I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Incognito Mega Last Concealer. And I have the shade Light Beige. And I'm gonna use my makeup sponge to blend this in. I really like this uh, sponge that I got from e.l.f. It's very soft. Really nice. Okay, I'm also going to take some on the eye area because I use sort of a concealer foundation combination on my eye area and I don't use a dedicated eyeshadow primer unless I'm using like a certain kind of eyeshadow that dictates that I need that. But wow, doesn't that make a difference in taking down the redness? Okay, um, you know what, let's, let's do a little over the pink down here too. Yeah, man, I hope giving up that makes a difference because this is really starting to aggravate me having to have all this irritation on my skin and having to cover it up. Okay, so concealer is on. Now we're going to go in with foundation. And the reason why I use that concealer is I'm going to use the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. And this is the Dewy. And my shade is Rose Ivory. And this has been sitting around for a while, so I'm gonna have to give it a good shake. And this has one of those big 
spatula applicators. I prefer pumps, but what are you going to do? This color is perfect for me. I wish every company made a rose ivory color in their line. By the way, speaking of perfect colors for your skin tone, I was on Amazon looking at the makeup. Oh, and we're taking this foundation everywhere. Um, I was on Amazon looking at the makeup and I came across this brand that I had never heard of. And I started looking at all their products and I was like, oh my God, it's like, it's like everything was shades that would be so complimentary on my light, cool toned skin, which is um, not that easy to find a company that more or less specializes in it. They did have other colors, but they just seemed to have more things that would suit me. And I think it was an I think it was an Asian company, and that might be why, because a lot of Asian people, I don't know if it was Korean or not, I'll have to see what I can find out. But if it's Korean, then, you know, there's a lot of Korean people with very light skin, but it's not necessarily cool tone. Um, a lot of people think that Asian people have warm toned skin and they, of course they can, but they can also have neutral and cool, just like a lot of other ethnicities. But anyway, I found an eyeshadow palette on there that was exactly what I've been on the hunt for because I've been on the hunt for a specific type of eyeshadow palette and you know what? I'm not going to say any more about it. I'm going to leave it like as a little mystery. And, um, but when I get my order, of course, I will show you and do a try on with it. But I'm so excited because I had like a certain idea for an eyeshadow palette that I wanted, but I wasn't able to find anything in the price range that I wanted to pay. So yay, Amazon. Okay. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to take Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. Now here comes my, my tip about how to work with pigmented eyeshadows. Now, when you work with pigmented eyeshadows, and there's a lot of companies that make really pigmented eyeshadows, um, you can get staining, you can get bad staining. And I have eyeshadows in my collection that when I wear them, my eyes will have that color that I use for like at least two days afterwards. And so I didn't see this anywhere. I just kind of figured it out on my own. I'm gonna put some powder in the cover. And I figured out that if I'm going to use a powder to set my makeup, if I use it everywhere, including the eye area, it creates like a barrier on my skin so that the eyeshadow doesn't stain as badly. Um, or doesn't really stain at all because the eyeshadow is going on the powder. So see, I'm putting it all over. I wouldn't normally put powder over my eye area because for a while there wasn't using powders at all because my skin is so dry. But it will prevent 
staining. And when you see what I'm using for eyeshadow, you're going to be very surprised that it does stain because people associate inexpensive eyeshadows with bad quality and not being pigmented. No, no. One has nothing to do with the other. Um, you can find low-priced eyeshadows that are very pigmented at any price point, really. Okay, let's do my brows next. I'm going to use my e.l.f. Shape and Stay brow pencil, and this is just a wax. So I'm going to use a palette today that I know has staining issues. And um, now because I put the powder down, I don't have to worry about it staining. Or if there is staining, it's going to be very minimal, and sh I shouldn't have any problems like getting it off with micellar water or just any kind of mild eye makeup remover. MAC Omega eyeshadow and my angled brow brush from Moda. I, I really enjoy these Moda brushes that I got, especially the eye ones. In case you're wondering about the warmth factor on this Omega eyeshadow, if you're interested in trying this, I would say it is a slightly warm eyeshadow in tone. It isn't cool. Some people think that Omega is cool, but it's actually slightly warm, but it's a very light color. So it's kind of an odd mix there because it's a very light color but it does have a slight warmth to it and that's exactly how my brows are. They're slightly warm but I don't want too much warmth because then that's going to clash with my hair being like a platinum blonde. Yeah, when you have extremely light hair color, brows can be a very difficult thing to deal with, your brow color. Because you want it to look natural. You don't want to stray too far from your natural color. Okay, let's move on. So what eyeshadow palette was I talking about that's pigmented but not expensive? I'm talking about the Hard Candy Moods Monochrome Shadow Palette in the shade Envy. These are really good and they're, I think they're $4 and they sell Hard Candy at Walmart, of course. But yeah, these palettes are awesome. I would love to have all of them. I mean, $4 for four eyeshadows, that's a good deal. Okay, um, I'm going to grab a small brush. And I'm going to start by going into the lightest shade in the palette. And I'm going to do my brow bone first, which, you know, I usually do that at the end and inner corner, but it's okay. You don't have to do things the same way all the time. But yeah, these are very, very pigmented. The 
Okay, so next I usually go into this bright green and I'm going to use this brush. This is one of the ones that came with um, my Lacura palettes that I got from Aldi's. So I'm picking up some of that. Grab my handheld mirror so I can get good precision here. And I'm going to put this in the crease. Let's see how pigmented that is. It's very, very pigmented. Now because I have some powder down, it's making it a little bit easier to blend too. So it's not just going to prevent staining, but it's going to make it easier for me to blend this very pigmented eyeshadow. Okay, and I'm also going to put a little bit in the outer part of my lid. And I'm going to switch brushes now, and I'm going to use a large shader brush. And we're going to go into this shimmery shade in the palette. And we're going to put that on the lid. But yeah, these are super bright and pigmented, and the powder trick will definitely help with controlling staining. Ooh, so reflective, really pretty. Okay, now I'm going to go back to that CoverGirl eyeshadow stick that I showed you in yesterday's video. And this is in the shade Greenscape. I found this at CVS, and I don't know if this is still available or not. It's it's from like three years ago in terms of videos on YouTube. And I'm going to put this right along the lower lash line. It's an eyeshadow stick, but I'm going to use this as an eyeliner because it has a very small tip on it so it's actually more suited for an eyeliner than it is an eye shadow and it's easy to apply too I, but I figured okay that's gonna coordinate with this eyeshadow palette now, on the waterline, what do I want to do on the waterline? You know what? I don't normally do this, but I'm going to take a small detail brush and I'm going to try to use the darkest shade in the palette on my waterline. Yeah, I don't normally like to use powder on my waterline, but Okay. Now, will it stay there? I don't know. Time will tell. I don't, I haven't done that, anything like that in a long time, so I don't really remember. 
Um, it might. Okay, um, let's take another look here. Do I need to bring that up at all? Yes. Let's, let's take this more into the corner. And then bring it up a little. I'm gonna, I was gonna stop, but, um, oh, I shouldn't have shut that. Because I have to use a nail file to open this. I don't want to chip my, my Ruby manicure. This is Nails Inc. Ruby on my nails. All right, I'm just going to pick up a little more of the bright green matte shade. And just take it up a little bit more. And I just curled my lashes, and I'm going to use Essence Lash Princess Mascara today because... I went into my drawer where I have mascaras and I was like, I haven't used this in such a long time and I need to remember what I think about this. Because this is one of the best selling mascaras in the world. They sell one of these like every, I don't know, 20 seconds or something crazy like that. I was reading something about that online one day. I was like, I don't really even remember what I thought about this the last time I used it. So let's revisit this and see. And obviously, I did the other eye off camera as well. Uh, yeah, see, this is not applying as easily as I would like it to. I just dunked it back in to pick up some more product out of the container. Okay. Let me look up so you can see how the lashes turned out. I don't know. It's not my favorite. Um, and we'll see what happens, too, if I get, like, any flaking or anything as the day goes on, because I don't, honestly, I don't remember. It's been a while since I used it. Okay, so on my lips... I'm going to use Wet n Wild Color Icon Lip Liner in the shade Brandywine because this is the only e.l.f. pout clout where there is no corresponding lip liner in their line with their new cream, um, cream glide lip liners that they came out with recently. There is no corresponding lip liner for the shade of the pout clout that I'm using today. And this and I think I, I am gonna fill in my lips. But this uh is the perfect shade to go with this. And this is such a classic. 
I don't think, I don't think Wet n Wild will ever stop selling this because there would be riots in the street if they did. Because this is a lot of people's go-to lip liner. Okay, so lips are line and fill, and we are using Elf Pout Clout Lip Plumping Pen in the shade Wicked Cherry. I pop this on my lips just by itself. Um, was it yesterday afternoon or something like that? And this color is gorgeous, you'll see. And this is like a uh, black cherry color. I got a little bit of that lip liner kind of sticking into specific areas. So I just blended that out with my finger. This is a very thick, very thick formula. Very moisturizing, very light reflective. and very tingly and plumping. It will plump your lips and it will tingle for at least an hour. But um, yeah, I thought that the green eyeshadow would look nice with this Wicked Cherry lip. So that is it for today, you guys. Oh, blush. Oh my God. Blush, bronzer, highlighter. What? Oh, oh no, oh no. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do my bronzer off camera. So Elf Putty Bronzer in Tan Lines. I looked over and I saw the blush sitting here that I was gonna use. Um, I thought that this LA Colors blush in the shade Berry Mauve would go best with this. Um, I'm going to use my Essence Blush Brush. Yeah, that coordinates nicely with this. And for highlighter, I'm going to use I'm going to use my Moira Dream Light highlighter in the shade Honeysuckle. I think this would coordinate nicely with this. I know I said I was going to always do highlighter over the blush, but eh, I don't feel like it today. So the only thing left is what? Setting spray. My favorite Milani Make It Last original setting spray. I can't believe that I... 
forgot the bronzer and blush and highlighter. By the way, I get these fans at Dollar Tree, uh, in case you're wondering. They're right in the household section, like where the household decorations and stuff are. They usually have a bunch of pretty ones. And they seem to hold up pretty well over time because I've had a couple of them for a while. All right, that is it, you guys. That is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my tips and tricks about shrinking sweaters and working with pigmented eyeshadows. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.